Everything that one can know in the universe is stored there in some way. Many people think that Mount Kash, hidden deep in the Himalayas, is home to the gods. Beneath its imposing summit and revered status, its ancient rocks conceal a mystery that has long baffled scientists and spiritual aspirants. There is a mountain that opposes Mount Kash, a mountain that is like one of our houses. Recently, a courageous team of scientists and adventurers set out to discover the mysteries of Mount Kash. Their discoveries shocked them and put their preconceived notions about spirituality, geology, and history to the test. What mysteries lurk behind these old walls? Could this find hold the key to the millennia-old holy significance of Mount Kash? Come along as we reveal the mysteries of the ancient cave that lies hidden beneath Tibet's Mount Kash, a location that defies reason. Mount Kash, often known as the Roof of the World, is located in the Nyari Prefecture in Tibet. Renowned for its rough, high-altitude desert terrain, this isolated region stands in sharp contrast to the verdant valleys of Nepal to the south and the undulating steppes of Central Asia to the north. With the holy lakes Manasarovar and Rakshastal at its feet, the mountain itself rises magnificently above the desolate plain, framing some of the most impressive mountain ranges in the world in a beautiful and tranquil picture. The mountain's pristine condition has been preserved by its remoteness, contributing to its enigmatic appeal. Mount Kash's great spiritual importance and breathtaking landscape combine to create a totally unique experience. Because of its profound spiritual significance and natural beauty, it draws travelers and pilgrims from all over the world. Mount Kash appears to have a will of its own and is resistant to climbing for reasons other than cultural sensitivity or legal restrictions. In contrast to the Greek story of Mount Olympus, where gods live and mortals are forbidden, Kash is distant and unaffected by human domination. Climbers frequently talk about an energy that defies explanation and a feeling that they have entered a place that is off-limits to humans. Scientists and geologists are also fascinated by Mount Kash, its unusually symmetrical pyramidal structure has some people speculating about how it formed. There are even hypotheses that indicate it could be an ancient man-made pyramid. But science says natural geological processes are what gave it its shape. When it comes to historical buildings, Maharashtra's untamed hills are a display for creative mastery and artistic grandeur. The Kailasa Temple, often referred to as Cave 16, is the most remarkable of Ellora's 34 rock-cut temples and monasteries. This amazing building, which was created entirely out of one rock, is a testament to the highly developed technical and artistic abilities of Indian craftsmen working during the Rashtrakuta dynasty in the 8th century. Known for its support of art and culture, the Rashtrakuta dynasty ruled over a sizable portion of the Indian subcontinent from the 6th to the 10th centuries. The Kailasa Temple was ordered to be built by King Krishna Rinman, who ruled from 756 to 774. CE. His idea was to build a monument that looked like Mount Kash, the Hindu mythological residence of Lord Shiva. The end product was an amazing building that defied every convention of traditional temple construction and raised the bar for architectural innovation. In contrast to traditional construction methods, the Kailasa Temple was sculpted from the top down from a single, enormous basalt rock. Because any error may cause the entire project to fail, this strategy needed an extreme level of precision and preparation. With the size and intricacy of the temple, the artist's method of carving the roof first and gradually moving down was both astounding and perplexing. Envision strives to mold an intricate sandcastle from the top down, with no way to correct errors after a section is chiseled. The Kailasa Temple's artisans had to overcome this obstacle. 
standing approximately 98 feet tall and spanning 164 feet in total length, the temple occupies an area twice as large as the Parthenon in Athens. This enormous edifice was constructed using an estimated 200,000 tons of rock that had to be dug. Mount Cash has an amazing shape. It resembles a massive pyramid that was formed by nature, with each side precisely aligned with one of the cardinal directions. Because it is uncommon in natural formations, this geometric perfection has given rise to a great deal of conjecture and theory. The most difficult part of this breathtaking mountain range is the north face of Mount Cash, with its steep cliffs that soar high above the ground, testing even the most experienced climbers. Conversely, the south face is just as spectacular, but provides a more accessible route and is frequently viewed from base camps. The image is completed by the east and west faces, forming a symmetrical pyramid that dominates the area with a bizarre, almost otherworldly presence. Many find this exact alignment with the cardinal directions to be fascinating. Some regard it as proof of the mountain's mystical and holy significance, while others think it is the product of special geological processes. Whatever the reasons, this alignment only serves to enhance Mount Cash's reputation as a spiritual beacon and natural wonder. The mountain is mostly made of some of the oldest granitic and metamorphic rocks on Earth, and its surroundings have a rich and complex geological past. These rocks attest to the mountain's prehistoric beginnings, having been produced over millions of years under extreme heat and pressure deep below the Earth, the region's harsh environment. And time have not damaged the quartz, feldspar and mica-rich granitic rocks, which have a gritty texture. The rough beauty of Mount Cash is mostly due to the metamorphic rocks, which have undergone changes due to heat and pressure. These rocks exhibit a wide variety of textures and compositions. With its stunning vistas, glacial valleys, pristine lakes, and serene natural beauty, Mount Cash is a sight to behold. Situated south of Mount Cash, Lake Manasarovar and Lake Rakshastal are two of these wonders. The region's spiritual and natural attractiveness is enhanced by these lakes, which have some of the highest freshwater altitudes in the world. Their pure waters and serene settings fascinate visitors. India has a long and diverse history that includes numerous cultures and religions that date back thousands of years. Its ancient civilization began to grow over the rich plains of the Indus Valley in approximately 2600 BCE, and it was centered on what is now Pakistan and Northwest India. Blessed with the Indus River and its branches, this area offered the ideal conditions for the flourishing of early agricultural societies. These communities combined to become the well-known Indus Valley Civilization, sometimes referred to as the Harappan Civilization, as they develop. The Indus Valley Civilization set itself apart from its counterparts in Mesopotamia and Egypt with its inventive urban planning, exquisite architecture, and remarkable engineering achievements. Cities with elaborate drainage systems, well-planned street grids, and remarkable public and private buildings such as Mohenjo-Daro and Harappa are examples of this civilization's inventiveness. The Indus Valley's twin jewels, Harappa and Mohenjo-Daro, provide insight into the everyday activities and extraordinary accomplishments of the ancient Indian population. They also demonstrate the incredible ability of these people to establish prosperous urban centers in the middle of the prehistoric globe. These historic cities were meticulously designed, with streets arranged similarly to those of contemporary towns, homes constructed with baked bricks and even indoor plumbing, a luxury that remains in certain areas even today. Mohenjo-Daro's efficient drainage system, which connected every home to a central sewage system and demonstrated excellent sanitation and urban planning, was one of its most notable features. A significant public bathing place, the Great Bath of Mohenjo-Daro, 
demonstrates the significance of ceremonial purity and community life in Harapan culture. The script of the Indus Valley civilization is among its most intriguing secrets. The meaning of the script is still unknown, despite the discovery of thousands of inscriptions on seals, ceramics, and other artifacts. Modern researchers are still puzzled as to the true meanings of these enigmatic symbols, which provide insight into the everyday life of the ancient Harappans. Numerous mysteries regarding the social, economic, and religious customs of this ancient culture may be discovered by deciphering the script. With wheat, barley, and peas as the principal crops, agriculture played a major role in the Indus Valley civilization's economy. Because of the abundant produce made possible by the Indus River's fertile plains, trade and urban expansion were encouraged. Seals from the Indus Valley have been found in Mesopotamian cities, providing evidence that the Harappans traded extensively with neighboring regions, including Mesopotamia. The Harappans were skilled metal workers who produced exquisite items made of bronze, gold, and semi-precious stones. They also demonstrated their ability to make jewelry. Additionally, they had a talent for adding elaborate decorations to ceramics, showcasing their creative talent in commonplace objects. The Indus Valley civilization appears to have been a more egalitarian society with a more uniform status for all, in contrast to several other ancient societies that had more overt indications of monarchs, palaces, or elaborate burials. Their identical dwellings suggested that the disparities in wealth were not great, and the objects discovered in the graves did not exhibit a large disparity in belongings, pointing to a potentially classless society. The Indus Valley was probably a bustling and social place to live, and the enormous storage facilities suggest that food was distributed in a well-organized manner, possibly under the control of a government. Public baths and wells demonstrated their concern for hygiene and the general well-being of the populace. Even though many of their views are still unclear, religion played a significant role in their lives. All things considered, the Harappans were part of a highly cultural civilization that valued equality, artistry, and camaraderie. Numerous old seals depicting various animals, legendary creatures, and maybe gods and goddesses have been discovered. This implies that the people who created them had faith in a wide range of strong deities. Consider the Pashupati seal, for example. It shows a person seated among animals in a particular yoga stance. Some scholars speculate that this could be a prehistoric depiction of the Hindu deity Shiva. The Harappan civilization's inhabitants were highly artistic and inventive in addition to being occupied with the construction of towns. They produced little statues made of clay, kids' toys, and exquisite beadwork. This indicates that they valued creating things and using art as a means of self-expression. They might have even taken pleasure in singing, dancing, and perhaps even performing in plays for entertainment or as a component of their religious rituals. The Indus Valley civilization began to decline about the 19th century BCE. Archaeologists and historians continue to disagree as to why this occurred. It might have been brought on by shifting rivers, resource depletion, or climate change. For whatever cause, people gradually moved out of the formerly busy cities and into smaller villages. New cultures and civilizations were made possible by this. The Indus Valley civilization declined, yet its influence persisted. It had an impact on the planning, construction, and social structure of later Indian civilizations. In addition, the spiritual and cultural practices of the Harappans made a lasting impact and contributed to the diverse range of customs that comprise modern-day India. It's like traveling back in time to explore ancient India. Every item, every abandoned city, every indecipherable carving, all of them contribute to the riddle of human history as a whole. Along with the area's history, the narrative of how the Ellora Caves were discovered is as fascinating. 
Due to his intense curiosity about this foreign region, British commanders in India would frequently embark on daring wilderness excursions in 1819. It was during one of these journeys that Captain John Smith discovered something remarkable, the Ellora Caves. The understanding of India's rich cultural past has been permanently altered by this finding. Neither an archaeologist nor a historian, Captain John Smith was. Rather, he was a British officer in colonial India, and part of his job description there was to explore the enormous territories ruled by the British. Smith, like many of his contemporaries, was enthralled with the mystery and beauty of the Indian countryside and enjoyed exploring it. Unaware of the remarkable finding that awaited him, Smith set off on an expedition with his friends on one memorable day in 1819. Traveling deeper into Maharashtra's wooded hills, they came to a place teeming with unspoiled flora. Beneath these rough hills, hidden for ages due to neglect, was the entrance to what appeared to be an old cave. Smith and his friends were intrigued by this discovery, so they started to remove the vegetation, which exposed an amazing sight. What was revealed was not your typical cave. Rather, it was a collection of intricately designed formations etched into the rock. These caverns were not only arbitrary structures, rather, they were elaborate temples and monasteries with priceless sculptures and decorations. The Ellora Caves were a vast complex that witnessed centuries of cultural exchange, integrating Buddhist, Hindu, and Jain traditions. Smith had accidentally discovered them. Among the dim, enigmatic caverns, one genuinely stood out as a work of old Indian artistry the Lord Shiva-focused Kailasa Temple, also called Cave 16. Captain John Smith had never seen anything like it before, so it was quite the sight. Rather than being built traditionally, it was painstakingly chiseled down from a massive rock, exhibiting an amazing feat of craftsmanship and engineering. Smith was astounded by the size and accuracy of this monolithic construction and was moved to consider the incredible skill and imagination of its designers. It was traditional for explorers of his age to leave their imprint on the history of the Ellora Caves, and Captain John Smith felt obligated to do so amid the overpowering sense of amazement and thrill at this astounding find. Smith inscribed his name and the date of his finding on a pillar in Cave 10, among the dimness and echo of the past. For him, it was a sign of his discovery and conquest, akin to asserting newly discovered land. Although these acts may be seen as demeaning to historical locations now, they were celebrated as victories and discoveries in the early 19th century. The Ellora Caves were acknowledged as a UNESCO World Heritage Site upon their reintroduction to the global community. The 34 caves in this 2 km long complex are arranged into three groups, each of which represents a different religion from ancient India. Twelve caves are dedicated to Buddhism, seventeen to Hinduism, and five to Jainism. Each group displays the distinctive creative and architectural traditions of its different religions. The Kailasa Temple is the most noteworthy feature of these caves. The temple is a display of that era's sophisticated creative and engineering abilities. Approximately 200,000 tons of rock had to be removed during construction, necessitating meticulous planning and execution. The end product is a large building with finely carved scenes from Hindu mythology, especially those about Lord Shiva. Captain John Smith's discovery of the Ellora Caves has had a significant impact on the field of Indian history and culture studies. It highlighted the advanced understanding of building, engineering, and art that the ancient Indian civilization possessed, shedding light on their amazing accomplishments. It was the caves that challenged preconceived notions about ancient society, particularly the Kailasa Temple. They appeared to have been created solely by superhumans due to their extraordinary craftsmanship and level of ability. It promoted more investigation and recording 
of India's historic sites. Since its founding in 1861, the Archaeological Survey of India has been tasked with appropriately investigating and safeguarding these historical artifacts. These locations were thoroughly examined by early academics like James Burgess and subsequently Ghulam Yazdani, who penned in-depth papers and books about them. These materials are still very helpful in comprehending the history of India. The historical and cultural significance of the Ajanta Caves draws visitors from all over the world. The caverns, which represent India's rich cultural legacy, demonstrate the ingenuity and devotion of its creators. Explore these historic corridors and take in the exquisite carvings in the massive Kailasa Temple and you'll be reminded of the amazing voyage of discovery that began in 1819 with Captain John Smith's fortuitous expedition. For the benefit of future generations, it is crucial to safeguard these caves as well as other historical places in India. The Archaeological Survey of India has been at the forefront of archaeological research and heritage conservation in India since its founding in 1861. Envision a group of committed investigators searching for answers in the past while working to preserve the rich history of the country. But their goal is to protect, restore, and publicize India's ancient treasures rather than just unearthing artifacts. When the ASI took on the enormous responsibility of conserving the Ajanta Caves, one such challenge emerged. These caverns are vivid images of India's artistic and cultural zenith, with their elaborate sculptures and majestic constructions. They are more than just ancient remnants. The ASI has used a variety of tactics over the years to preserve the structural integrity and aesthetic appeal of the caverns, from cutting-edge scientific procedures to stop water damage to tactics to counteract the impacts of aging and tourism. The decision by the Chinese government to outlaw climbing atop Mount Cash demonstrates the great regard and awe that people have for this hallowed location. In order to preserve the site's holiness for the innumerable pilgrims who brave the arduous trek to feel its mystical atmosphere, authorities have strictly forbidden any attempts to reach the summit. Imagine a location so sacred that even seasoned climbers are required to put aside their goals and approach with the utmost respect and humility. This holy mountain's peculiar weather patterns are among its most fascinating features. The natural laws seem to bend and twist in this area, contradicting our conventional knowledge of weather patterns. There have been reports of clouds that seem to defy gravity, almost as if they have a life of their own, swirling and dancing around the top in captivating patterns from both residents and tourists. According to many tales, there are unusual bright events that flicker across the mountaintop like ghost lights, giving off an eerie glow that mesmerizes onlookers. Even the most skeptics may take notice of the myriad of theories and conjectures that have been generated by these peculiar characteristics of Mount Kash. According to some, Mount Kash is more than simply a typical mountain. Rather, it's a potent energy vortex that brings together cosmic and spiritual energies that exist outside the realm of human comprehension. Scientists, on the other hand, speculate that these strange events could be explained by the special electromagnetic qualities or composition of the mountain. The people living in the area also believe that Mount Cash is a connection to other worlds or dimensions, potentially even a cosmic portal that links our planet to the cosmos beyond. Proponents of this hypothesis suggest that the mountain may have been used as a landing location for extraterrestrial entities, citing historical traditions and reports of alien visits. It's likely that the observed unusual weather patterns and lights are not only random occurrences, but rather pieces of a bigger cosmic jigsaw. Some people even think that Mount Cash 
serves as a beacon, directing sentient beings to Earth from other planets. However, the growing number of pilgrims and visitors poses a threat to the mountain's fragile ecology and ethereal atmosphere. The Chinese government has responded to this challenge by putting in place a thorough conservation plan to save this sacred location for future generations. This enormous endeavor necessitates striking a careful balance between protecting the delicate ecosystem surrounding this magnificent mountain and maintaining religious traditions. The Chinese government's conservation efforts on Mount Cash are likened to guarding an invaluable cultural asset. Unwavering devotion and a thorough comprehension of the site's significant significance are required for this undertaking. A comprehensive plan that addresses threats to Mount Cash's delicate ecosystem from both natural and human-caused sources is at the heart of these conservation efforts. Every effort is made to maintain the immaculate beauty of this holy site, from investing in state-of-the-art technologies for environmental monitoring and restoration to implementing stringent laws on waste management and tourist behavior. The effect of climate change on the region's fragile alpine ecology is one of the main issues facing conservationists. The fragile equilibrium of this high-altitude environment is being threatened by melting glaciers, rising temperatures, and altered weather patterns. The Chinese government has teamed up with top academic institutions and environmental groups to counter these risks. They work together to carry out in-depth studies and create adaptable ways to lessen the effects of climate change. A specialized group of specialists has been gathered by the government to track the retreat of glaciers and examine the intricate web of alpine plants and animals that make up the ecosystem. It's a race against time to save not only Mount Cash's structural integrity, but also the diverse array of species that thrive under its shadow. However, scientific research is only one aspect of conservation efforts. The Chinese government has also acknowledged how important it is for the local populations and spiritual customs to maintain Mount Cash's holiness. They have incorporated traditional ecological knowledge and spiritual practices into their conservation plans by collaborating with indigenous tribes and religious organizations. The endeavors encompass integrating eco-friendly methods into the pilgrimage itinerary and instructing guests on the significance of honoring holy locations, developing a profound respect for Mount Cash and encouraging a sense of care in everyone who enters its hallowed territory are the objectives. However, successful conservation still faces several obstacles in spite of these efforts. Since an increase in tourists may cause environmental damage and disturb the site's hallowed atmosphere, Mount Cash's growing popularity as a tourist destination presents special challenges. The number of visitors and pilgrims who are permitted to enter the site at any given time has been restricted by a thorough visitation management system that the Chinese government has put in place to handle this. By preventing overcrowding from interfering with pilgrims' ability to begin their spiritual journey, this restricted access helps safeguard the delicate ecology and maintains the value of the pilgrimage experience. Amidst a time when technological advancements and human aspirations frequently rule the environment, Mount Cash represents the fine line between safeguarding the natural and spiritual legacy and enabling people to appreciate its immense beauty and importance. What do you think of the ancient cave found inside Mount Cash in Tibet by these scientists. Share your thoughts with us in the comments section below.